How's it going, everyone? This is Wimbo. Today we are going to do a quick Blender tutorial about camera settings. All right. So since the last videos, you know there was a one、uh, subscribers asking me about what is the best focal length of I know, perfect rendering for product photography. So as you know,、uh, there is no perfect focal length. Otherwise, there will be one single lens, right? For for something else, for everything. So I just want to really explain that the concept of distortion about lens. So in the real world, you know, typically we are separating our our lens into like a, a general, just cutting up from the 50 millimeters. The reason we have 50 millimeter lens is calling standard lens is because it's very close to what the actual Now, human eyes perceiving things and looking、uh, around this world. So, as you can see here, there's a one image that I I found out from the internet, where perfectly demonstrating the distortion about on the on when I take picture of a of a human subject. This is exactly the same person, but the looks looks very significantly a difference because we're using different. Uh, focal lens on the zoom. So basically, what does that mean for for this? I wanted people to interpreting this picture correctly. Is、uh, the photographer always trying to use a a frame to put the the person in the center? The face it looks very different. And when you look at using the 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 focal lens like less than fifty, you can see that there's actually distorted. Person face very different way, so that's actually what what's happening here. And then if you see the 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 pictures above fifty millimeters, so it's right here. It's it still have a little bit compression going on to kind of make the face uh uh size look narrower rather than this is very broad wider. It looks very distorted. It just doesn't feel comfortable to look at it. And sometimes, actually, because of our phone, iPhone camera or phone camera,、uh, is actually is a using a default lens is 28 millimeter. I think because it's kind of considered a wide lens. So when you're taking picture of yourself selfie, usually that's what looks like the big face is getting distorted somehow. So another thing I want to point it out for distortion when you're picking the focal lens is. Anything above fifty, especially around anything above hundred millimeter, that focal lens that doesn't change too much compared to the the compare、uh, compared to distortion the under fifty. So under fifty, you can see that a small number that is only nine, right? Only nine millimeter difference. It looks pretty significant. That is only like. Twenty, there's only five millimeters differences. You can see that looks quite different. But compare here to three hundred fifty to one hundred. That's a hundred fifty, a two hundred fifty millimeter differences. But the look looks pretty close. So one one take home message is that when you taking when you when you shopping for lens or taking pictures for using Blender.、Uh, Actually, something less is longer than a hundred doesn't make a huge significant difference. Well, that that's just a little bit off topic, but I just wanted to explain that why we need to pick the the focal lens for our specific uses. For for when we go back to the answer these questions is when we're trying to to taking picture of products. A majority of the time, we're trying to showing some details that usually our our natural eyes that does not really、uh, see very often. So we usually use、uh, something around 80 millimeters or up to to、um, 135 millimeters to kind of do some close up micro shot to show some details of products, texture, and lettering or packaging, whatever. So that's what we do. So. On on my、uh, on my practice, usually I will choose 110 or 100 millimeters、uh, for my focal lens when I taking when I doing product rendering like this. So that's just off the topic. So now what we will do, I just gonna close this、uh, tab. So what I will do, we are going to explore a scene that I already built for uh, uh for our master class in the、uh, in.、Uh, In 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 the blender. So what we will do here is we will see the here. If I hit N tab, N key, you will see a menu come down here. Here is a viewport, 
uh, manuals of view focal length. Currently setting up 110, which is uh, my preferred focal length. But this is not the actual focal length when you do you know, rendering. This is the focal length that when you're having actual uh, uh, kind of cruising around in the 3D environment. So that's what you try to having that distortion control by that. By default, usually it's the 50. So it's like that. When I type in 50, oh, sorry, 50, so you will watch the what's happening on, on the on the viewport. It just looks very different, right? And the distortion when I close in is a little bit different compared here. If I'm going back to 110, and then it looks very much compressed. If you can if you can notice this kind of tiny differences. You're, you're on good uh, right track. So anyway, so this is kind of one thing I want to point it out. And another thing is, in this scene, where you have a lighting, everything uh, built up, I just temporarily hide them so you won't see that, feel them a little bit uh, distracting. So what I'll do here, I can hit Shift A to adding a camera. Okay, so now we are having a camera right here in the scene. As you can see here, this is a highlight of cameras. And, uh, and I want to say this, this camera is being activated. The reason why is because there's top triangles being a solid color, which means a active camera. And the benefit of using 3D software to doing product rendering, um, and is actually uh, you can adding multiple different cameras angles to to doing the exactly same. Uh, product render so actually save you a lot of money you don't need to spend any money to, to buy a camera but you can have different angles and to do pretty cool renders anyway so now we have a camera right so now we can see here's camera so I can just rename that camera new now if you pay attention on the sidebar you quickly see that if I'm selecting something random uh, the background you won't see the camera setting so you have to go select the camera and then you can see here's a camera setting down here uh, now what we can do here we can start setting up the camera but before I start doing this uh, you know what we're looking at here in the viewport is already uh, 110 right that looks kind of the ideal uh, setting we want to do and what it looks like inside of us uh, what it looks like through the camera we wanted to know how it looks like so the shortcut key on that is the zero on the on the number pad key okay so it's, if you have full uh, keyboard that usually is on your right hand side there's a, a number pad section if you're only using laptop you probably don't have that uh, and, uh, control on that so I hit zero you can see here this is what we look at through the camera so as you can see here because the camera is pointing down to here it doesn't look good so what I, I want to see here I want to kind of find a, a random angle that I just want to free my camera views in here how can I do that well here's a pretty good shortcut keys here so if I'm just finding for example I just want to having yeah this angle and then I want to having the the viewport uh, being inside of my frame so what I do making sure I select the camera I can hit the control alt and zero on the of course on the zero number zero pack pack key so it didn't go through because the my I have a separate uh, number path keyboard it's a wireless so it's kind of delayed so let's do it again so let's go that here Alt control uh, control alt zero. So now I can see here this is what it looks like. I'm here. So now my camera immediately jumping from here up here now. So you have the zero again. So this is what it looks like in here. It's pretty nice, right? But still I'm not a fan of this camera angles. We definitely need some uh, tweaks uh, to making the perfect composition. Uh, we want there's several options let's go into the the uh, camera settings right here so the first of all is the lens as you can see here there's a uh, differences so what we're looking at on the viewport we're using 110 millimeters and now what we are actually using looking through right now at this moment using the camera that is 50 millimeters uh, we can't zoom in but I really want to have that tight compression uh, uh, focal lens that we just talked about it. So I'm just going to dial it in 110 because I'm syncing 
this these two numbers together, making sure they're, they're probably right. Uh, they're exactly the same. So whenever I'm zooming out, coming out, or I'm going inside a camera that looks about the same, it has the same distortion factors going on here. So that's kind of what we try to usually set up for the lens part. So we're good on that. But still, you know, this is not really the the perfect composition or the preferred compositions I want. So I want to be able to man manipulating the cameras a little bit better. So there's a couple of things we can do here. If I hit, uh, hit G, grab it, and I can just kind of grab things going on here. I can see here, here's a cursor in the center of frame. So I can kind of dial, I, I mean, changing the, the way it looks. And then if I uh, right click, I uh, left click, then it's locked in. Now kind of, you know, a little bit better. How about if I'm zoom in? Well, if without hitting any key, so if you move something around, then you suddenly, you come out of the, the camera view. So if I'm hit zero again, I just want to zoom in while I'm in the camera view. How can I do that? So you're gonna hit the G again, and then you're gonna click the middle mouth button, which is the, the scrolling roll, uh, a mouth rolling button, and just kind of move up to your camera. So now you kind of zoom in, right? And then hit G again, and if you just kind of move to the left, you can kind of, you know, you can positioning the, the thing again here so so this is kind of shortcut key that uh, i wanted to, to let you guys know how to do that so it's kind of pretty neaty uh handy that you can just kind of zoom in and out right and to do that and sometimes people prefer that there's a is a to lock the camera views and then just using the mouse to grab that's what's going on in the scene so you can do that still under that the view tab menu so you if you can hear lock lock the camera view check that off check that on so what you can do here if you just kind of left click you don't do anything and uh, it doesn't working right you can see that and but if you if you holding the in the middle mouth button you can actually just kind of grabbing the, the scene instead of the camera so you can do that uh, you can where you can zoom out uh, the scene out but I personally prefer to uncheck it off I can just uh, I can use the G and the middle mouth button to to kind of kind of grabbing things around making sure you select the camera and I can just I prefer this way uh, than the other but everyone everybody has a different approach so I just I'm just showing the options okay uh, so that's kind of like the, the neat things about what I typically use I just gonna hit end to close the site menu another thing is sometimes I often use is that I don't want to see the stuff that outside the, this viewport it's kind of a little bit annoying right and and uh, I just want to kind of only see what's going on inside the frame so how can you do that you're gonna hit the uh, control B key and you see here's a selection uh, things going on here you just draw a box and quickly select that now everything else is being cleared and then you can just focus in on uh, what's going on here in the scene so if I'm grabbing another another uh, separate the split this window so moving here in the cursor become a, a cross and then I just drag another one so I can have another viewport going on here so I'm just gonna temporarily leaving the side and uh, I can I don't need to, to touch and move anything I can then I can just moving around in this environment so it's kind of giving me possibilities uh, to just look at it I don't need to tap zero all the time to go inside a camera view so I can do that so if I hit G again so I'm grabbing that that's what just looks like on the inside a camera right pretty cool right yes so it's a pretty handy tool over that well let's go back to the camera and they go a little bit depth in the camera settings as you see here here's a uh, background image what you can do typically you can having a picture added on to getting uh, overlay in from the camera but this is not a really intro uh, entry level or uh, uh, techniques that you use you know, when you do in compositing which is I already made some uh, videos about CGI compositing with actual photograph and the uh, CG environment you will know I use this as a, a very useful handy tool that you will see that you can 
check my videos on the link on the right hand corner and then the next thing that i really want to discuss is the the depth of field so right now as you can see here uh, my camera didn't enable depth of field right now everything looks nice and sharp and uh, that's just because we don't we we our human eyes were looking for contrast either in color either in light or either in the focus contracts so the depth of view is the best tool i mean you can manipulating to control the focus some object can be focused some some background elements can be in and in, in blurry and in, uh, and it's not that very sharp so what you can you can see here from the top view that this three three bottles are not aligned on the same axes or planes so which means the focus well, i can focus on the front forward uh, uh foreground elements and make the background elements look a little bit uh, uh not that sharp right if i'm going in here you can see here everything is sharp and if i'm going to the camera view and you go go here and uh, if I enable depth of view, uh, make sure you watch this what's happening. If I enable that, and suddenly everything's become blurry. And you were like, what the heck is going on? I don't want having a blurry image. Well, it's because we don't have a focus object. So if you really use a real, ever use a, a real camera, you will know that you have a focus point, which means uh, whenever your focus point is focused, that that area is supposed to be the 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 center part of that your focus, and then depends on your the aperture you use and the lens uh, focal lens you use. You want to see how much sharpness you can control. Anyway, so what we can we are actually having here already adding a a focus point which is here. So where is the focus com point coming from? You can just do Shift A, adding a empty. Uh, you can just adding an empty subject and i just change the name as focus point and I, as you can see here i move this empty object very close to the front label of this uh, this uh, this bottle and, and now if i hit n if i go to the view here uh, as you can see here um everything's nice and nice and uh and, and the cool in here so if i'm going to the camera view a uh, new camera and i select the focus object and i using the eyedropper to select the focus and suddenly watch so now you can see yeah we have something going on here and uh in the focus something is is sharp because this is a kind of low light but as you can see here background is a little bit blurry rather than sharp if i'm disabled the depth of view uh, yeah it's sharper right and i able that what's what, what's causing that yes that would be the next thing that we can set up is the aperture going on here so the aperture settings we are we are we are having here is the is very similar to the real actual camera that we we're using the actual uh the f-stop number uh is typically is the full stop will be 1.4 2.8 4 5.6 8 uh, 11 16 and uh, 22 so that's our like typical standard uh full f-stop numbers you don't really need to memorize all these numbers but this is what uh real cameras and real, real lens actually having that f-stop so because i'm a photographer and also have a little bit ocd so i usually setting up my f-stop just on these exact numbers i don't i don't really want to do like 2.1 or something that is not really a, a naturally exist in the real world i mean it's not going to be a big deal but that's that's just my preferences so the depth of view is how much sharper items that you will be able to see if if i'm going to zoom in here right now because the number is setting up 2.8 it's it's a small number but it's a big aperture yeah i know it's, it's kind of messed up but that's how it works if i'm setting up as a uh let's do 22 yeah this is a pretty big number but a small aperture this, this the depth of view is actually become wider it's actually more things being sharp 
right? See, it looks very sharp. If I'm going back to the 2.A, which is yeah, big aperture, but a smaller number, uh, then what's going to happen is, uh, uh, and, and watch, uh, if I hit enter, it actually looks, is become blurry. So the focus areas is become being controlled by the focus point, uh, focal, uh, by the focus and also the aperture. So that's kind of how you control this depth of view. Okay, so cool. So this has been covered all that. So another benefit I would just mention earlier is that we can have um, multiple cameras and do different uh, different angles to kind of do the renders, and that will be a really plus, right? So once we set up a scene, we can do uh, different pictures. So what I did, what I've done, I already set up some cameras. If I check this thing off, I already have other two cameras back in here. So I'm just going to temporarily uh, see what's uh, check off this uh, camera we just added in. Oh, before I do that, I want to mention that again. So as you can see here, we have three cameras, right? One, two, and three. The di major difference is, is which one is being active. So as you can see here, we have this which means this is an active camera, and this and uh, the indicator is the triangle is being a solid color. So if I'm gonna use this camera, I need to making sure this camera is being the active uh, camera in order to kind of getting uh, to, to use in order to kind of do the render. If I'm hitting zero, no, it's just still the camera that we used earlier because we haven't changed that yet. So after selecting the, the camera, I can hit this shortcut key, Control Zero. And now you will know this camera, see here, is having a solid triangle and this being active. So this is kind of the, the, the angle that, another angle that I really love. And I want to use this as for my render to kind of uh, to render out some details of this. And, and if I'm going to select this camera again, go to the depth of view, focus, this will be a little bit better uh, presentation for the depth of view. So now it's 2.8, so the background kind of looks a little bit blurry. If I do 22, which is pretty small, I've stopped. So now everything's sharp. And uh, sometimes for product photography, sometimes you, you want to have this ultra sharpness across the image because you just want to show details. And uh, adding a, a very like big apertures like 2.8, it doesn't really make uh, realistic very much. Uh, so that's my personal opinion because it depends on what you try to express. Uh, so this, I just want to focus in the texture of the letter and it's just showing some viewers some background information using the blurry effect uh, when, when I control the aperture. Okay, well, I think by far this is everything that uh, I want to cover and I hope this video is really helpful and uh, the file you are actually uh, looking at is including one of my uh, current uh, Blender 3.0 master class for product photography and designer. Uh, if you are in uh, interested to having some realistic product renders uh, and uh, and uh, welcome to sign enroll my class. And uh, if you're signed a pre order now, you will be able to getting a forty nine dollars of discount uh, using the uh, the discount code in on Gumroad. And also, if you're uh, wanting to having questions and uh, uh, and uh, hangouts on my social media, you can uh, find me on the Instagram. You will see all the informations on the uh, description session. And um, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.